everybody. Video here for you today. Hope everybody's doing good. We're going to talk some ancient America today, but not from the mound builders. This goes a lot further back in history. We are going down to eastern Washington today. This is where the site sits today. Notice this right here. Well, that was like a coffer dam that was built a long time ago to help preserve the history in this place. That goes back maybe 12, 13,000 years. A dam was built downstream and they built this to try to protect this, but it failed. And this site was flooded. A lot of history going back to the Younger Dryas period and probably further was lost. Just a little geography lesson. This whole area was really decimated by catastrophic flooding at the end of the last ice age. I know a lot of you are familiar with Randall Carlson's work coming from this area of the world. Here, the Palouse River comes into the Snake River. That's where this is located. And it's not too far away from Kennewick, Washington, where the Kennewick Man was found. I did a video on that last year. I know a lot of you are familiar with that story. I did this video about five weeks ago. Turkish citizens say goodbye to 12,000-year-old city. Well, flooding from a dam. We lost some history of the site that was at least 12,000 years old right down here. But let's turn back the hands of time here and go back about 50 years. Here are officials from Washington State University at the site here in the early 60s trying to figure out the best way to protect the site from flooding from the dam. Here's a look from inside the rock shelter in 1967. This was a very important place. It was a burial ground. And there is evidence people lived in this rock shelter for 8,000 years to give it some sort of historical perspective. It says here, the Marmots Rock Shelter, 1968. This is what the site looked like before the lower monumental dam reservoir was allowed to swallow the archeological site. Although its size is hard to determine through this photo, the rock shelter's entrance is around 25 feet high. Here's a pic from 1968 when they were in a race against time to get artifacts out of the rock shelter here. Here's a pic. It says flooded Barmas, 1970. Look at the top few feet of the cofferdam built to protect the site. As soon as the backed up river began to surround the cofferdam, it also began to seep under the hastily built dam, not taking into account the loose silt and gravel underneath the riverbed. Washington State archaeologists cringed as they watched the rock shelter flood. 50 years ago. But here, this is the lower monumental dam, and it was the creation of this that raised the water levels in the Palouse River. Here is a video I will leave the link to. I know a lot of you in Washington are familiar with Nick Zetner and his work, but here is a look at this area where Ice Age flooding just carved a whole new landscape. And here is Palouse Falls right up the way, and different levels of this flooding came through here. And there is a waterfall left over from this, right up the way from this ancient site. There's a nice pic of Palouse Falls. Here's the Seattle Times from about three years ago. They did a story here, sight unseen, floodwaters buried a treasure trove at Marmish Rock Shelter. Here's a pic from 1968. Students listen to a lecture as people dig down below at the archaeological site that expanded outside of the rock shelter. That's coming from 52 years ago. Unless there's a rock mound right there. Here's a look at the site from the 1960s when archaeological work was being done here. And it was pretty interesting reading about this place. The farther down they went, the older the artifacts got. In one area, they went down to about 9300 BC, about 11,300 years ago, which is a period right after the end of the Younger Dryas. Once they found out how important this site was, it says ripples from the publicity rolled all the way to the other Washington. Influential Senator Warren G. Magnuson paid a visit, soon convincing President Lyndon Johnson to authorize money to build an impromptu horseshoe-shaped cofferdam to protect the site from rising waters. Construction of the smaller dam began in the winter of 1968. But... By the time the dam was completed in 1969, the waters rose. This archaeological site of significant importance was lost to history. Here's archaeologist Brent Hicks at the site. It says, most eyes long ago turned away from the Marmus Rock Shelter, which is today notable mostly for its profound silence. The opening of the cavern is still visible, barely, along a quiet lakeshore upstream from Lyons Ferry State Park. 
with no interpretive signage. It draws scant attention from anglers who beach boats along the crumbly Knoll Coffer Dam, then cast for trout in the still pool inside. Here's a look at some of the artifacts found in here. It says, inside the shelter, round storage pits buried under successive layers of large basalt rocks crumbling from the ceiling contain tools, traces of food and plants and weapons and other materials suggesting long-term occupation. Two digs in the early 1960s yielded a wealth of artifacts, including butchered animal bones and teeth, shells from as far away as the Pacific coast, projectile points and scraping tools, Diggers also exposed large numbers of small human bone fragments found beneath volcanic ash layers, suggesting they were as much as 8,000 years old. Now, I know something about that volcanic eruption. Here is a video I did about a year ago, and this is a cave site in Oregon here, 10,500 years old. But also in this video, I included Crater Lake. And that was an eruption that I learned a lot about and how devastating this was. And this spread volcanic ash and debris all around the region. Here is the Marmus site up here, just northeast of Kennewick. Crater Lake is all the way down here. I think it's over 350 miles away from the Marmus rock shelter. But this went off about 5800 BC, if I remember correctly. Here is a look at Crater Lake in the wintertime. But this was a devastating blast from this volcano over 350 miles away at the Marmus site. They were buried under many feet of ash. Here's one of thousands of spear points found in the rock shelter. This is determined to be a Clovis spear point. Here's the overall site today, the Coffer Dam. There's Brent Hicks, the archaeologist hiking up there on the left. It says, Hicks is convinced that the archaeological record will reveal that humans were present during the great glacial floods 13,000 years ago, and that they reoccupied the newly channeled scab lands quickly, understanding how they lived, how their lives changed throughout what is likely a tumultuous pre-contact history, is the next challenge for Northwest archaeologists he believes. This is an important time in history. The world literally changed 12,000 years ago, and maybe some evidence from these people, how they lived, what they were doing, will give us a hint into that time period. Now, just reading a little, there was a discovery here, 1968, Marmus Man. And at the time, those were the oldest skeletal remains yet discovered by archaeologists, estimated to be around 12,000 years old. He was later placed back into the rock shelter, into his gravesite, where he still resides today. That is my video on the Marmus rock shelter here. The dating went back 12,000 years, and the people that were working here 50 years ago said if they could dig down further, they were sure they could get to older artifacts. They ran out of time, but a very interesting part of the world down here, catastrophic flooding. Right where the Palouse River joins the Snake River, just north of that, that is where the site is. But this whole part of the world, about 12,000 years ago, was a pretty interesting place to hang out. Severe flooding, seems people were here. There's a record of it in that cave or that rock shelter. Flooding took it out. We may never know what's in there. Hope you thought that was informative. And you all have a very safe day.